This is LG's latest home theater system. This is called the Cinebeam Q. I recently purchased this at 1100 pounds. That was a 200 pound discount on the pre-orders from its retail price of 1300 pounds. Everything that I'm going to review and give you my opinion on will be based off of this being the full retail price if you do go ahead and buy this at 1300 pounds. Now, this has a lot of features in it. It's 4K native laser projector, a single laser, and it also has 500 anti-lumens. It can project up to 120 inches. And also it has LG's TV WebOS built into it, rather than the traditional Google TV or Android TV that you would expect from most projectors. Now, as you saw from the title and thumbnail of this video, this is great. It packs in a lot of features in this very nice little compact design. However, there are some problems, and when I say problems, there's some scenarios that actually, in my own honest opinion, does not make this good value for money. So make sure you stick around to later in this video to find out what they are. But let's go ahead and get started and see what this can do. So in the box, you get yourself the power plug, the remote control with two AA batteries, user manual and the projector itself. Let's just take a quick look at the remote control. You can see it does have the dedicated Netflix, Disney Plus and Amazon Prime video buttons. And it is very basic, but it does resemble more of a LG TV remote control. But we'll dive more into this later in the video. Now design wise, this is very portable and it's made to take with you and travel with. You can use this outdoors if you need to as well. And that's a really nice, unique feature of this. It has this 360 degree rotating handle that you can actually use to either position or angle the projector upwards if you need to, or you can just use that to carry it and have it very transportable wherever you want to take it with you. On the back of this, you have a single HDMI port. You have a USB-C port, which is also nice, a DC input, the power button, and also the infrared receiver just on the right. Then you have the fan at the back as well, and we will be testing the fan noise. So let's go ahead and test out the fan noise. Just going to get close. Now, I'm not sure if you can hear it clearly. Of course, me standing in front of this, I can hear it much better than all of you watching this but the fan is not that quiet. Because the speakers are only three watt speakers, I can see the fan actually interrupting this at low volume if you are going to watch content, but I was actually hoping that the fan would be a lot quieter given the size of the projector, but that's not the case. So unfortunately that's not a really great thing that they've done, but let's go ahead and test things out at full volume as well to see if it does eliminate a lot of this fan noise that I'm hearing. Okay, so I've just made it more dim in the room just so you can see the projection a little bit more clearly. Now let's go through some of the OS and the system settings. So this is LG's TV web OS. It's got that familiar design if you do own an LG TV. So you have all of your favorite apps. You have Netflix, Prime Video, Disney, Apple TV, YouTube, etc. You can also go through to the App Store once you've logged in. I have to say the setup process to log into my LG account, that took about 10, 15 minutes. It does sometimes take a while to get everything set up, including signing into all of your apps one by one. You also have a web browser and all of the other apps that you would expect from LG's TV web OS. One thing I have noticed, the AirPlay option is just like my TV. It's very natively built into this. It's so fast, it's so responsive, and it's very quick and easy to just watch anything from your iPhone or your iPad, and that works absolutely great. You do have the option to send the sound out to a speaker. Now, I would recommend using a speaker if you are going to keep this projector long-term because it doesn't have very loud speakers in built into it. Of course, it's a very small, compact, portable projector. So you don't expect it to have loud bass or any type of subs in there. Now if I just open up settings, you've got the picture mode there that you can switch from standard, cinema, sports. You can see that's very bright. Game optimization if you do connect your consoles. Filmmaker mode, brightest. Expert, this is also good for daytime watching as well. So I may leave it on this. Then you also have expert dark space. So let me go ahead and leave this on expert bright space because I do have a bit of daylight coming into the room right now. Sound out, projector speaker, you can also change this if you do have external sources connected. 
like a Bluetooth device or HDMI ARC soundbar, game optimizer, sleep timer, connect to your network, installation wizard, and all settings. But if you go into general, you find a little bit more information about the system as well in case you ever want to do a full reset. You also have an option for support as well in case you are having problems using this projector. So all in all, this WebOS system is nice, it's fluid, and I actually prefer this over the typical Android TV or even Google TV system. I just think it's quite nice. It's actually very responsive when I do use the remote control, and that's something I can't complain. Now, one thing I will say is that if you are going to use this 4K laser projector, Typically, laser projectors will work best when you have an ALR screen rather than your typical matte white screen or you just have a white wall because you'll get the most quality from the output of the picture on an ALR screen. But having said that, you would probably have to spend around the same cost as the cost of this projector just to get an ALR screen. But I want to showcase the best quality that you can get with the LG Cinebeam Q by using my ALR screen instead of using my matte white screen which does look for me, in my opinion, very washed out just because it is only 500 ANSI lumens. So let's go ahead and compare them. So I'm gonna take the white projector back up and I'm going to raise the ALR screen, which is a floor rising screen. Now, just by doing it half and half, you can start to see the difference in quality. Of course, this is darker and it's gonna look so much better when I have blackout or I'm watching this at night time, but I just wanted to show the contrast in the difference of quality when you do use an ALR screen to a typical cheaper white screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the complete swap and we'll jump into the demos. Now the autofocus is really fast and also the auto keystone. Just look at how I'm placing it, moving it around. It really adjusts it and it makes it very accurate. And I really like this feature. So you can see here, no matter where you position it, which angle you use, it will do a great job straightening it out for you and making sure it's in focus. So even if I go back, make it larger, you can see it maintains the clarity as well. You don't even really notice that it's auto-focusing it. It's that quick. And this is the fastest and best autofocus auto keystone I've seen in any projector. So LG have done a really great job on that front. If you are planning on using this with an ALR screen, then this makes it much more manageable to watch during the daytime. Of course, if you have direct sunlight coming onto this, then again, it's still not going to solve that problem of being able to watch it comfortably. But this is going to be more for me personally watching at nighttime or in a darkened room. And remember, I have set the picture mode to expert bright spaces. So this should be tailored to specifically daylight coming into the room. And it is manageable as you can see on the video but I'm going to now show you a demo for its full capability when I'm going to switch over now to nighttime. Stand by. Cue. So hopefully you enjoyed that demo and you saw what I saw, which was a very clear, crisp, sharp image, especially when you have a very darkened room. You can enjoy your movies, your TV shows very nicely if you do want to set this up for your home movie nights. The pictures and the color were vivid, they were vibrant, and I can't really fault that, especially paired with an ALR screen. This is like the perfect quality to watch your content especially if you set it up in your room, you just wanna chill back and enjoy your night times, then I have nothing but positive sides to say on that front. And they've done a really good job 
making this a very portable high quality 4K laser projector. Now paired with the audio quality you also heard, it is quite loud, but again, it's not such a punchy speaker. It doesn't have much bass. And you can see that I actually went to 100% maximum volume just to try and hear a lot of the things that I'm watching. Now, if I'm going to watch a movie that's fast paced action movie with a lot of explosions, then the speakers on its own, I don't think it will do justice and you won't enjoy it as much as if you do watch this on a TV, for example. So that's why I always recommend you have something like a soundbar just to really take the home cinematic experience that step further. But overall from the image quality, especially at nighttime, this is near perfect. So going back to my original question, there are some problems with this that in my opinion, don't make this great value for money. The first one being the remote control. This is a white plastic and it looks like a very cheaply made remote control. I feel like LG have just used this as kind of like an afterthought. They wanted to cut costs maybe, but if you're gonna have a metallic projector like this and you pay 1300 pounds for it, then at least have a slimline metallic remote control that looks premium. All the projectors I've reviewed in the past have slimline remote controls that have two AAA batteries. This one is quite chunky. It requires the chunkier AA batteries, but not just that. I've noticed whilst I've been using this as well, no matter where I'm standing to the sides of the projector, this doesn't work because the infrared receiver is on the back side of it. So if I'm a little bit to the side, to the front, or even a little bit lower down, it doesn't work and it doesn't register the inputs. I have to move and go behind the projector just to allow me to actually use it. So that's not great as well. And maybe they could have just created maybe an RF remote rather than an infrared remote, but overall, I feel like this costs no more than 10, 15 pounds. So it doesn't feel like it matches it. The color doesn't match. So for me, the remote control can actually make a lot of difference as well. And, and this just isn't it. The second thing is that 500 ANSI lumens of brightness. This is not going to be great to watch in any scenario in the daytime, especially if you have a lot of sunlight coming into the room. That's irrespective of if you're using an ALR screen or just the white screen or just the wall. For me, you need to use this at nighttime or in a very dark room to get the maximum usage out of it, to really enjoy it. If you just have a look at this sample, this is how dim the 500 ANSI lumens are when you are projecting this on a white screen or a white wall with a lot of daylight coming into the room. This is going to make it very difficult to actually enjoy your content because it's not that bright. Of course, you can make minor adjustments through the settings of the color modes, but none of them are going to make this in any way replaceable to a normal TV. So if you're planning on using this during the daytime, then I would say it's probably not going to be worth it. Probably don't even bother doing that because as you can see, it's very washed out and there's no way that I would actually use this during the daytime. But if that's something that you want to be okay with, then by all means, that's your choice. But then I would say there's a lot of other projectors out there, even small portable ones that can give you a lot brighter images in the daytime. I reviewed a projector recently, the Dangbei Atom. That one is a lot cheaper than this. And also I can use that because it's a lot brighter in terms of the ANSI lumen count as well. But if you're the type of person that is looking to spend 1300 pounds, I would say there's a lot better options on the market. And you can also get something that's around 800 pounds that does so much more better quality video in the daytime than the LG Cinebeam Q. So that's something just to be aware of. And obviously I'm reviewing projectors all the time, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the other projectors around this price range that can do a lot more than this one. And third, last but not least, is the speakers and the audio quality. Of course, this is a very small projector, so there's only so much technology they can build into this that allows it to have very large outputs. It's not hi-fi, it's not Dolby audio, Dolby sound, nothing like that. It's just standard speakers and three watt speakers is just not enough. And depending on how far you actually sit or you're on your bed lying down wherever the projector is placed, you may need to put it all the way up to maximum 100 like I've had to do. And even then, it still wasn't as good as enjoying it with like a sound bar or even a projector that has really high quality speakers built into it.
So if you are considering buying this, then make sure you do have a soundbar connected to it, or you're just going to have to use Bluetooth headphones. And if you're okay with that, then of course, then that's your choice. But spending this much money for this projector, you would expect it to have really good audio quality in addition to video quality as well, because you want it to have the whole package. You don't want to be able to spend a lot of extra money for accessories on the side, just to get that home cinematic experience from your room. So for me, the audio is not great, but if you have to have it, then you have to have it. But for me personally, I don't think this warrants spending 1300 pounds for this projector. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found that review useful and I want to hear from you and your opinions as well. Would you consider buying this? Have you already purchased it? What were your experiences? Make sure to drop a comment down below. Ask me anything. If there's anything else you want to learn about the LG Cinebeam Q, then I'll get back to you as soon as I can as well. Make sure to like and subscribe. I've got a lot of projector reviews coming out. I review all things tech as well. So make sure you don't miss any of those ones and I will see you all at the next one. Take care.